So good evening everyone. We're live here at the School of Ministry in Toronto at the Spiritual Gift Seminar. We'd just like to welcome everyone who's online watching. Uh, my name's Andy and this is Laura and we're the uh, outreach leaders of a team who's going to Peru in January. So we'll be giving you some prophetic words and praying for you all tonight who are online. Welcome, welcome. So I just want to invite you to stand. We're going to come into a time of worship. So take it away. Father, we welcome you. We welcome you here tonight. Let's just begin to welcome his presence, however you want to do that. Sing out, pray out, be quiet, however you like to welcome the presence of God. Let's just do it. Hey, Father, we welcome your presence in this room. We want to meet with you. We want to feel you tonight. We want to encounter you. We want to hear from you tonight, Father.
her say the way he says my name he calls me lovely no one ever sees the way he looks at me he sees me holy words can never hold this love that burns my soul heaven holy Oh, 
it out. Release that song of love now. blessings you pour out over us, for all the blessings you pour out over us, yeah, just thank him in your own words, just thank him right now, oh, thank you, Father, hey, Lord, you are so good, oh, you are so good, oh, you are so Press into your presence, Father. We press into your presence. Father, we want more of you. We want more of you. We want to experience. 
experience you, God. We want your grace. We want your mercy. We want your love to pour out on us, Father.
our hearts to yours, O oh God. We repent for our sin and we turn to you again. Oh Father, tonight we turn to you. God, we're crying out for more of you in this place. God, we're crying out for your freedom, for your freedom that will set us free from sickness, yeah. Oh, we're crying out for more of your grace, Father, for more of your grace. Hey. In you, in you, there is abundance of grace. In you, there is freedom, there is freedom. Let us be in you, oh God, let us be in you, yeah. Oh God, we cry out for your mercy. Oh God, we cry out for your grace. Even when we don't deserve it, Lord, oh God, we cry out. Set us free, oh, would you set us free to dance, Lord? Oh, God, we cry out once again, yeah. Oh, God, we cry out, yeah, for your mercy, for your mercy in this place. Oh, God, we cry out. We need you, 
farther Oh, we need you, Jesus Oh, we need your grace Oh, we need your grace, yeah All I need is you All I need is you, Lord Is you, Lord All I need is you, yeah, yeah. All I need is you, Lord Is you, Lord All I need is you Sing it out
Oh, you're everything, everything I need. Oh, you're all we want, Lord. All we want. Everything, everything we need. Oh, you're all we want, God. We just want you. Everything yeah, we need, and all I need is you. And all I need is you. Is you, Lord? And all I need is you. Yeah, God, we just come before you. Tonight as we were praying as a team, we just heard so many words about the intimacy of God and coming and how much we need Him and people coming into that in intimacy with the Father. And uh, so tonight as they were just worshiping over and over as they sang, all we need is you, God. All we need, it seemed that the theme tonight was, was God really wants to reach out and touch you and reach out and pour into your life and show you and pull you up into His warm embrace, into the loving arms of the Father. And as we sing, all we need is you he is reaching out and he's saying I'm here I'm here and I'm pulling you into you into my arms so that putting your head on my chest so that you can hear my heartbeat so I just want um, if we could repeat that again all we need is you father God all we need is you and he's saying to you yes I am here for you as you cry out to me I am crying out to you and it's a two-way relationship it's not just you saying father God I need you but he's saying, I need you as well. I need you as my son and my daughter. Yeah, God, all we need is you. All we need is you. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you.
You're my God and my firm foundation. It is you whom I trust at all times. I give glory and praise, adoration to my Savior who's seated on by grace. By grace I'm free, you've rescued me, all I am is yours. I found a love greater than life itself, I found a hope stronger. Now, Lord. 
I see you. I see you, Lord. I see you, Lord. I see you, Lord. I see you, Father, looking me in the eyes. I see you. I found a love greater than life, and a hope stronger than nothing compared. Now I'm alive in you. Oh, I found a love in you, Father. Yeah. I found a love. was blind now I'm alive in you I'm alive in you I'm alive in you oh I'm alive in you oh thank you father oh I'm alive in you I'm alive in
Yeah, so we were praying earlier on, and um, one of the things that I felt was um, that God just wanted like a new kind of depth of intimacy with us, and uh, and some of us He just wants like because we're His kids, and and He wants us to talk to Him because He's our Dad, and He loves and He loves us like because He's an awesome Father, and He just wants His kids to like to talk to Him more. So I just want to like I just want to encourage you if you if you think that's for you that that y'all think today that you know the Father's saying. You know, can you can you talk to me more? We've got a, an awesome prayer ministry team that's just going to come and, and lay hands on you. So if any of any of you in the room feel like that's you, you can you can stand or or put your hand up, and we've got a prayer ministry team that's just going to come and lay hands on and pray for you and to encourage you. 
So yeah, Father, I just, I just ask, Father, that you would just come with just a new depth of intimacy and, and just really encourage us and challenge us to, to speak to you more, Father, and just show us your love in a new, incredible way tonight, Father, and give us that new passion for you again, that new passion, Father, that just inspires us to just, just talk to you, because you're our dad and you're awesome and you love us so much. Another thing that kept coming up when we were in prayer was just hope and a sense of like people who have maybe lost hope in, in God or maybe there's like a, a healing that they've been after for a really long time and it just hasn't happened. We just, we just really got a strong sense of just God coming in and just restoring that hope and restoring that faith and through that just building up this new joy that they've never experienced before and just with that intimacy just experiencing God in a way that they've never experienced him before we had like had like a picture of God just like coming in and just sitting like on the couch like next to someone like he's just right there with you so we just really just if there's anyone who just has a sense of that whether it's here whether it's at home to just for God to just come in in any places where hope or faith has been lost to just build those things back up and build them 10 times stronger than they were before and to just keep pressing in and that God just loves you and just wants to get to know you in a, in a deeper and more intimate way and to just keep pressing forward for that. And yeah, we just want to pray for Phil um, online. He's um, he's wanting a deeper relationship with God. So, God, we just ask that you would just come and meet Phil where he's at right now, Father. Ask that your Holy Spirit would just come into the room that he's in and you would just fill him up with your spirit. Yeah, God, come and go deeper in him, Father God. Go deeper than he's ever known, Father God, and just fill him tonight with your presence. Yeah, just earlier we were praying and just got this picture of um, really black, thunderous, um, tropical rain clouds just in the, um, um, in the distance. And they just kind of rolled away and this flash and bolt of lightning just came down. And it was just like the power of God and it was the brightest, brightest light of lightning. Um, and we just, that energy was being discharged and the energy that um, comes through our you know, heavenly daddy is just incredible and is just amazing. Um, and we, you know, we had other words of you know fear that nothing can ever stand in that brightest light. And um, you know, just as we started worship, just the just the brightness and the light that there was, and nothing can stand when the um, in the light of Jesus. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, Holy Spirit, it's just a prayer for Jocelyn who just wants to see, you know, more of the Holy Spirit. And oh, Holy Spirit, you're so welcome on Jocelyn right now. Oh. Holy Spirit, I just thank you that you just love to come and you love to touch us and you love to just grace us with your presence. Oh. Hmm. I just, yeah, Justin, I just want you to know that the peace of God is with you and that his presence is all over you right now. Hmm. Hmm. It would give you boldness to stand up, give you boldness to speak out, because you haven't been given a spirit of fear and timidity but of power and of love and a sound mind. And it's not of you, but it's of the Holy Spirit. And I just believe that you're going to, um, yeah, boldness is just going to rise within you and you're going to speak um, the words that he is speaking to you. He's going to speak to you so clearly. Um, and your yeah, relationship with him is just going to explode. And um, yeah, there's exciting things to come for you. Oh, just um, press in further. Um, while we were praying in the... Um, um prayer room before I just felt the Lord saying that he's just going to restore people's destinies that they may have lost or may have felt they've lost so if that's anyone in the room if you'd just like to stand up or if that's someone over the computer um, if we can just get some of the soaking prayer team just to go around and pray for people I just want to pray for you over the computer Lord I just pray that you just come and restore people's destinies daddy but you just give them new insight into what their destinies are Lord and you just come with your power daddy amen I sensed God saying that there's a lot of people out here who have depression. So if you struggle with depression, there's hope because God said it. He wants to set you free tonight. If there's someone in here, please put up your hand that one of our prayer team can come and pray for you. 
and I pray for everyone else at home. Father, I thank you that you want to see us free, that you want to see us happy and full of joy and rejoicing because you're so good. And yeah, I pray for these people at home that you set them free from that impression that all the demonic spirits have to leave right now in your name. Yeah, and we just want to pray for Blanca, that she needs to know that God loves her and that she, he takes care of her. And Blanca, he does. I just wanted to speak to you tonight and just say your daddy is so in love with you and he's got you in his arms. You know, I was reading earlier somewhere in Deuteronomy where it says that God has you in his arms and you know, you cannot fall any further than his arms. If his arms are underneath you, you can't go, in, you can't go anywhere. There's nothing underneath to fall onto but into his arms. So I just want to speak that over you, Blanca, that you would know that your daddy is taking care of you and that your daddy is wrapped in, wrapping you in his arms. So, yeah. Um, Sarah, would you like to come? So tonight, Sarah's going to speak on dreams. So um, if you just stretch your hands towards her, we're going to pray for her tonight. Yeah, Daddy, we just ask that you would come right now and fill Sarah with your presence, Papa. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would um, bring her new revelation as she even speaks today, Father. That um, the words that flow out of her mouth would just be words straight from you about, about the dreams that you give and what they mean, Father God. And we just fill her up right now. In Jesus' name. Yeah, Father, let her drink of you tonight. Hey, Father, we want your presence to flow through what Sarah has to say tonight. So we just welcome you, Holy Spirit. Let's just welcome him, all of you. Just begin to welcome him. Hey, Holy Spirit, we want to honor you in this place where, you will, where you're moving. We want to go. Hey, what you're saying, we want to listen. We honor you in this place tonight. Hmm. Fill Sarah up, get her totally drunk in your presence, God. <laughs> Amen. Ah, oh, thank you, sweetheart. Yeah, I do. I'd love a stand. Well, how are you doing, everybody? Oh, thank you. I've, I knew I'd forgotten something, something mildly vital to the, to the cause. Oh, well, it's good to see you. For those of you at, um, at, at home, hey, how are you doing? Um, I missed you last week. Uh, we weren't here last week, and I was like, oh, I just feel like I miss you. I'm, it's, it's good to be back, and good to be back with you guys at home. Well, I am, uh, I'm, I'm going to be sharing tonight on a topic that I am really passionate about, and that is dreams and a little bit on dream interpretation and kind of a, a few things that God's put on my heart in that area. Now, in some ways, I had great conflict whilst trying to prepare for tonight because it's sort of like trying to get about an 8 to 12 hour seminar sort of stuffed into about 30 minutes. And I, I'm a person who I want you to have the foundation I want you to have all the key points. I want you to start at the beginning, move through the middle, and get to the end in good order. I'm like, if, you, if we're going to teach and think about dream interpretation, I want to go through the Bible, then I want to go through keys, then I want to go through symbols. And you'd probably still be here at 2 o'clock this morning, which, you know, I don't know about you, but I bet a lot of you would be asleep by that point. So tonight is going to be a little taster. Are you all up for a taster? Do you, have you ever been for a little tasting thing where they give you a little bit of cheese or, or something nice and you kind of, it's so small that you just get the flavor of it, but usually you're left wanting more? Hopefully that's kind of where you're going to be left tonight. You're going to be like, oh, I've, got, I've got a grip of it, but I know I want more. Um, this has probably been a subject I've been sort of researching, delving into reading every book I can get my hands on for about the past probably 12 years. Um, I've always been a dreamer. I can remember dreams from when I was about five years old. All through school, I'd always be like, oh, dreams, I love dreams. There's just something about it captured my heart. And 
It wasn't until I was 19 years old and I grew up in a charismatic church surfing on the edge of the charismaticness that God was doing that I actually heard that God still spoke in dreams today. You know, I'd look to all the you know, people in the Bible that God spoke to in dreams, but I hadn't, they'd never mentioned that God could still be speaking in our dreams today. And I was so excited when I found that out because I was like, okay, bring it on. I want, if God is speaking to us, I want to be listening. If this is a means that God is using to communicate and I don't understand it, then I need to change something. I need to learn so that I can hear him when he speaks to me. Now, one of the reasons that we have sometimes a little difficulty in understanding our dreams is that 95% of our dreams are symbolic. They're not sort of, you know, hello, Sarah. This is your handy angel interpreting dream guide tonight. You are dealing with these issues in your life. You have a little bit of anger that I want you to deal with. And God has a great destiny for you in 10 years. This is going to happen. Thank you very much. You know, it would be helpful. Uh, my good friend Alan, um, he often has angels appear to him in dreams. And one day he was kind of complaining about it a little bit to me. And I was a little like, complaining? Next time an angel turns up in your dream and you're feeling like, oh, again. Send them over to my house. Keep your addre my address close by and be like, Sarah, she wants an angel to turn up at the end of her dream and tell her what it means. And, you know, we don't have time tonight to go through the different dreams of the Bible. There are various different ways that dreams came in the Bible. Some were uh, symbolic dreams. Some were literal dreams. That means a dream, uh, really a prophetic dream of something that later comes to pass. Some of the dreams, God or an angel appeared to the person and was like, hey, Miriam, guess what? Something exciting is about to happen in your life and um, get ready for in this certain time period, this is going to happen. You know, I always like those reading those dreams in the Bible. They seem very simple and easy to act on. Do you notice around the birth of Jesus, there were many dreams. God spoke to several people in dreams as kind of saying, hey, I'm going to protect um, Jesus. And he spoke to his father, Joseph, several times like, get up. It's dangerous. Go to Egypt. And then a few years later, he spoke to him and said, hey, it's safe now. You can come back. And what, one of the things we can um, surmise from that is God used dreams as a trustworthy way to communicate with mankind. And God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? Seven people agreed with me. We need to maybe go through the scriptures a little bit more. Uh, but... You know, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if, if he communicated in a way in the Bible with us, then he is going to able to communicate in that way with us now. Ah, already my notes have fallen to the floor. Um, aha. Did you know that you were created to dream? If you do not dream... Uh, Scientists have done tests. I don't know why they do these tests, but probably just for the fun of it. Uh, but they, they, they did all these uh, kind of tests where they, every time a person started to enter into dream sleep, it's a, a certain type of sleep, they would wake them up so that they wouldn't ever enter down into dream sleep. After three days, they found that the person would start to exhibit signs of a mental and emotional breakdown. I was like, oh, interesting. You know, our bodies need to dream. God created us with this inbuilt need to dream. And um, he, he says that he speaks to us in dreams. Acts 2.17, great scripture. When he, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I'll pour out my spirits in those days, and they will prophesy. Now, I am not an old man. I'm very sure of that. I'm confident. I've looked in the mirror. I know. You know, so what is that verse saying? It's saying young, old, male, female, you know, smart, not so smart. You can dream dreams because God is pouring out his spirit on you. Now, there are several types of dreams. Some dreams with a message, you know, and I would say that there are three sources of dreams. 
Just like in our thoughts, there are three sources. You know, we can have our own thoughts like, oh, look, I wonder what time is it? Oh, I'm hungry. You know, thoughts about natural life, um, you know, intuitive thoughts, thoughts where you're, you know, making intelligent, logical deductions. Um, you can also have thoughts where the Holy Spirit speaks to you in your thoughts. He's like, hey, you know, what about doing this? Or I love you. And you know, most of us have, hear the voice of God in our thoughts. And at times we can also hear the voice of the enemy, kind of like, oh, you're fat, you're ugly, you, you know, no one likes you anyway. That's the voice of the enemy, the negative, critical um, thoughts. Dreams are just like that. You know, we have thoughts where God is speaking to us where God is speaking messages to us. We have dreams where sometimes it's just the busyness of day, you know, the busyness of just things going on. Have you ever had one of those dreams when you're very cold and you're just like you're dreaming and you're in the Arctic and it's snowing and there are polar bears and then you realize that your duvet or your blanket or comforter has fallen to the floor. That is not necessarily a deeply prophetic dream about your call to the Arctic or the Antarctic, but maybe that's just a dream saying, hey, your comforter's fallen to the floor. You are now cold. Or, you know, some of you may have had those dreams where you need to go to the washroom, and uh, you may dream that you go to the washroom, uh, but it doesn't seem to help at all in, in your dream. Are you with me on this? That is not necessarily a dream of, you know, deep intensity, but it could just be a dream speaking of the natural functions of your body and your body saying, hello, hello. When you were smaller, you probably weren't so good at listening to those uh, promptings, but, but you get better, don't you? You know, and so th there can be those natural process dreams. Sometimes when I've had a really busy day, when we first started doing CBN, I would often come home at night and I would dream that I was interviewing people and sort of talking all night long. And I'd wake up and I'd be like, no, Sarah, that finished three hours ago. But it was the busyness of the day being processed. Um, there are also dreams where sometimes the enemy tries to throw a bit of a curveball and cause fear and things. But uh, kind of as a little side note there, all nightmares are not from the enemy. It's often nightmares are actually the cry of the unhealed heart. And, and I would recommend before you just start rebuking something, if you have a bad dream or a nightmare, to ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, is there any pain or fear or anger in my heart that is kind of shouting, hey, take a look at me? Um, and, and often that, that may be something revealing a, a place of pain that is going on in our hearts. So those, those I've talked about natural dreams, about dreams from the enemy, and then dreams from God. Message dreams, direction dreams, dreams about your future, dreams about I have good things in store for you, dreams that warn you of a certain path. Who here has had dreams where, um, that, where you feel God has spoken to you in, in the night? Wave a hand at me. Okay, almost everybody here. It's fantastic. You can wave a hand at home too. Um, I've had so many dreams where God has spoken to me, where he's warned me, where he's encouraged me, where he's given me hope when I was feeling discouraged, where he's spoken crazy things about my future that I'm a little like, oh, my word, are you sure? Wow, you're really big. Um, there is that 5% of dreams that is for people or situations outside of yourself. And one of the, the helpful keys that can help us determine whether a dream is for us or a dream is for somebody else is the activity of you as the dreamer in the dream. Of all the dreams uh, recorded in the, in the Bible, almost everyone adheres to this principle that if you are in the dream and interacting in the dream, like, doo -doo -doo, here I am, oh, look, hello. You know, if that is happening in the dream, then the dream is really about you and your heart and your life. You know, just as Daniel said to Kim, King Nebuchadnezzar, the Lord wants you to know the thoughts that have been on your heart. He wants you to know what's kind of really going on inside. So, that can be very helpful for you. If, if it's like watching TV and there's no interaction from you, then potentially that dream could be for a person or a situation outside of yourself. 
But when that happens, you want to act wisely. You want to be able to say, Holy Spirit, what do I do? Because you don't just run blabbing up to someone. You know, the, the, the having a dream about another doesn't necessarily mean that you have to tell them every detail. Actually, you want to ask the Holy Spirit first. When God gave visions, dreams, insight to people in the Bible, sometimes they wrote it, you know, like John in the New Testament, he wrote it out to the seven churches. Some things, you know, Daniel talks about God told him some things and he wrote them down and he sealed them and he didn't, he didn't publish them. Some things he was like, this needs to be kept secret. Some things God may be calling you to pray for a person. And, um, and sometimes he may be saying, yeah, go tell them and encourage them or, you know, uh, speak into their lives in that way. This morning, I woke up with a dream and uh, I woke up before my alarm. So I usually know that that's God because that's a very rare occurrence. And, and I woke up and I'd been in the middle of a dream, um, just really seeing some events going um, on around um, a friend of ours. And, and I woke up and I was, you know, when you wake up and the dream begins to sort of drift away and you're trying to grab onto the detail and it starts to feel weird as you get into daylight. Anybody else? Or is that just me? Okay, most of you. Um, and the, the main thought that was on my heart as I began to wake up was, I need to pray for him. I need to pray for him. And so, and, 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 and God had kind of shown me one or two things. He was like, this and this, I want you to pray into these two things. And so as soon as I woke up, there was just this urgency in my heart, like pray for this guy, pray for him. I, I've put him on your heart because I want you to be a part of his journey. I want you to be a part of what I'm doing in his life. And you know, I, I emailed him and just was like, hey, God really put you on my heart today. And I just felt to pray for him and encourage him um, and, and just encourage him what God was doing. And you know what? I love, I love being part of that adventure. I love God using dreams to kind of be like, hey, this friend is on the other side of the world. I'm speaking to you about them while you sleep so that when you wake up, you can pray and change things that are happening in their life. Um, another guy who had a dream um, was Joseph. You know, Joseph was, is, is one of the two main uh, interpreters of dreams that we see in the Bible, Joseph and Daniel. If you want to read about dream interpretation and learn from those people, those are the two places that I would recommend you look, the book of Daniel and kind of Genesis 37 to 45. Those two places have so much rich content when you begin to look at dreams. And uh, when we join Joseph in Genesis, where is he, 40, 37, I think, um, it says, you know, he was a young man of 17, and he was the favorite of his father, you know, and when you have lots and lots and lots of children, and then there is the favorite who gets all the good things, I'm sure there was a lot of family tension, and, you know, his brothers hated him and could not speak a kind word. That's a lot of family tension. So he has a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. And uh, he said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field. So he's in the dream. Do you notice that? We were binding. So he's in the dream with his brothers. They were out in the field binding sheaves of grain. Now, what you notice when you look at um, the majority of the dreams in the Bible is that the symbols God uses to speak to people are symbols from their life. If you look at the two dreams of Joseph um, here in Genesis 37, Gen the first one, it's out in the field, binding sheaves. This was obviously something they did often. The second dream was of the sun, moon, and stars bowing down in the sky. Uh, you know, do you want to bet that he often looked up into the stars because there was no light pollution in those days, which you know would would have meant the stars would be a lot brighter. Uh, and uh, it's interesting. I mean, King Nebuchadnezzar dreamt of you know he had there were statues of gold. There were this great huge tree that reached up into the star into the sky. You know, you look at these different things, and there are symbols that would have come from the life of the dreamer. So often when God speaks to you, he's going to use things from your life. You know, he, he, I don't really dream of camels 
But I do, I do often dream of cars, of my apartment, my house, of my husband. I dream, I dream with the people of my life. And often the people who are in our dreams will speak to us of aspects of ourselves. You know, sometimes you may have someone turn up in a dream and you're like, that person is so annoying. Why are they in my dream? I just detest them. You know, they're just, they're so selfish. I just dislike them. They're just selfish and they hold on to things and da 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 Well, you know, potentially, you know, I, I would ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, are you, are you speaking to me of any aspect of my heart that is like that, that is selfish, that I despise? Are you speaking to me about this relationship that maybe there's, maybe there's something that I need to deal with? You know, because God is really interested in our hearts. He's really interested in the state of our hearts. And one of the things that you begin to see about Joseph is that he had quite an incredible heart. When you meet him at 17, he is a cocky, arrogant young guy. You know, does anyone think it was wisdom that it was like, hey, brothers, look at me and my coat. And oh, by the way, I had a dream and you will be bowing down to me. You know, he was just full of himself. They already hated him. Did he think the dream was going to improve that? It, it, it seems to me like he'd moved beyond trying to make them like him and was more like just, you know, I'm going to rub it in your face that I'm going to be better than you. And see, right now I may be kind of almost the youngest, but maybe I'm going to get the firstborn inheritance. I mean, hey, that had happened to his dad. Maybe it could happen to him too. Maybe he'd get the double blessing. You don't know what was in his head at that point. But he was pretty arrogant. He kind of had it going on. Um, and so he has these dreams, and, and they were very significant dreams. And, you know, his father recognizes the significance of the dreams. You know, even though his father rebuked him for sharing the second dream, it still says that he noted it and, and kind of pondered it in his heart. Now the story unfolds, and, you know, finally, you know, the straw that broke the camel's back, I think it may have been one of those dreams, and uh, his brothers sell him into slavery. And I I just can't imagine how far away the the, the reality of that dream that God had given him seemed at that point. Because... You know, once you, when he's with his family, even though the brothers hate him, there's always that feeling like just around the corner could be that thing that happens and they're going to be bound down. Maybe I'm going to find the golden camel or, you know, whatever it was in those days you looked for. I guess they probably didn't have trees in the desert, did they? Did they have that whole money growing on trees? Whatever it was, when he was with his family and free, that possibility was around the corner. But when you're sold into slavery sent to a foreign country, I, would, I wouldn't have been surprised if he'd been like, you know, that's it, God. You gave me a dream, but obviously it's not coming to pass. What sort of God are you? Ra, 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 ra. You know, I could, you know, imagine him going off on that sort of venting. But no, it's kind of crazy. He, you know, you, you see him a few chapters later and he's sold to Potiphar and, you know, God is with him. And it's interesting when you see him at Potiphar's house and you see him in the prison, in each account it says he had success at everything he did. The Lord was with him and he found favor in the eyes of Potiphar or in the eyes of the prison captain. And, you know, instead of just being like, oh, I'm going to resist everything about my life, he began to be just this really godly guy. He began to walk with integrity. And, you know, from the point that he was sold into slavery by by his brothers, he began to enter on what I would term a 22-year character refining process. And some of you have really big dreams. They may be dreams that you've had in the night. They may be dreams that God has given you in a vision. They may be dreams that you've birthed in your own heart that God has just like set on fire inside of you, whether it's like, I want to be a missionary, I want to be a doctor, I want to be really wealthy and start nonprofit organizations, I want to um, work in government, I want to get married, I want, you know, there are a thousand and ten dreams that each of you probably have. And sometimes we think it's all going well and then it's like life takes a sudden right turn. Has that ever happened for anybody? You've been like, oh, yes, yes, 
course, it's all, uh, what, what, what? And, and suddenly life just drags you down a road that you never expected it to do. And I would say that happened here for Joseph. And yet you see, the thing is, in these 22 years, God begins to work on his character. God begins to work on his heart. Where he goes from being an arrogant guy uh, to one who is actually filled with humility. He begins with arrogance. He ends with humility. That he, um, he begins to make these statements and you, hear, you see them and you're like, oh my word. How come you didn't throw the baby out with the bathwater? You know, do you have that, do you have that um, what do you call it, metaphor? Expression, that's a good word. I expression in your culture, you know, just like, oh, you know, I had that dream and I thought it was going on. I am never going to dream again. Oh, Leah, you talked about dreams. I shall kick you and ignore you. No, you know, you'd have thought he would have been angry about it, maybe bitter about it, like, oh, I'm just not going to think about that. But after, you know, he kind of rises to the top of Potiphar's house and then everything goes wrong again. And you wonder when he was in Potiphar's house, did he have that thing in him that like maybe this is the way it's going to work. I thought it was going to work back there, but now I'm the head of everything in this house. Maybe things are going to change and maybe Potiphar's going to free me. And then I'm going to maybe amass wealth in Egypt and then I'm going to go back to Canaan. And do you wonder if he had that plan? Have you ever had plans? I know I sometimes have plans for how I imagine God is going to do things in my life. When I was single, I often had plans for how I imagined God was going to bring the hot, wonderful husband to me that I really longed for. You know, and you'd be kind of like, well, it could be this person if it's this person. Da, da, da. And you'd be like, da, da, da. well, I'm, I'll make sure I'm there so they see me just in case it is this person. And you'd be kind of making all these schemes in your mind. Has that ever happened to anybody else? One other. Thank you. Thanks for putting up your hand. You know, but often when we want something, we're like, God, I want this. And then we begin to plan in our own hearts how we will get it. And often we sort of leave God in the dust whilst we start making those plans. Anybody ever yet? Okay, just me. And, you know, you see, you see Joseph, after 13 years, it took 13 years before he was freed from being a slave and from prison. And in Genesis 40, verse 8, Joseph says, Do not interpretations belong to God. And he's talking about dreams. Do not interpretations belong to God. And I would say when we approach dream interpretation, that should be the foundation for everything that we do that the interpretation belongs to God. It's not us trying to figure things out. It's not us flicking through some manual. It's not us trying to do some new age kind of interpretation thing. We are saying the most high God interpretations belong to him, and he's the one who unfolds them before us. He's the one who gives us wisdom. And I, I just wonder if he'd pondered on those dreams many times over those years. And even the very fact that he was able to speak out and say the interpretation, and he must have thought of that dream back there, belongs to God. Now, uh, you know, he gets freed from prison, and, you know, in one day he goes from probably potentially having lice in his hair to being the second most powerful person in Egypt. Talk about an express elevator. And... God had prepared him for that day. God had prepared his heart. You know, when Potiphar's wife was like, hey, come on over. How many of you would, have, would think that it would be so easy for him to be like, well, everything else has gone wrong in my life. Who cares about God? You know, this, this, this could be a good opportunity for me. But even in the midst of a really dark place, he, his character, his integrity, he stayed true to, to the things God has spoken to him in his life. And many times on our journey to get to the place that we have vision for, our character will be really tested in life. It will be tested in things. And, and I've had several dreams where, I'm, where I've seen things. I'm like, I want that. I want to pray for healing and just see people just get up off their deathbed. 
I want to just, for it to be as natural as breathing, just like, oh, you know, do, 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 and carry on with life. You know, I want to, you know, I've had dreams where I've transported to different places just in the spirit and just being like, choo, choo, choo. and I'm like, I want to do that when I'm awake, not just when I'm dreaming. You know, there are things that God's spoken to me about, about really bringing change and, and sort of this kind of the spirit he's put in me that I'm like, I want that, but I don't see it yet. You know, how many have had visions or dreams, whether kind of when you're sleeping or even maybe just a vision that's passed before your eyes in, in your head that of things that you're like, I, can't, I don't even know how that will happen in life. Okay, quite a few of you. Did you know in the Bible, um, when it says dream, sometimes it, it also calls it a vision of the night. Those two words can be quite interchangeable. Um, so sometimes, uh, especially in Daniel, it'll talk about, and then Daniel, in his dream, he looked into the vision in the night. And then he said, in my dream, in the vision of the night. And you're a little like, were you awake? Were you sleeping? Were you awake? But they seem to, there's a, a real you know, correlation between visions and dreams. And um, God is more concerned with the journey than the destination. And especially with dreams and dream interpretations, sometimes they're fun. Oh, it's like a slot machine. Oh, I've had a dream. Put, put it in the slot machine. Okay, here's the interpretation. And there's just this sort of like, it would be fun if every day you were like, oh, I had a dream this morning. Oh, by 2 o'clock, I know exactly the interpretation. And sometimes people come to me like, Sarah, oh, I had a dream. Oh, I don't understand what it means. Oh, I've agonized. And I'm like, oh, my, well, how can I help you? And I'm, I'm like, when did you have the dream? They were like, this morning. And I'm like, I have so many dreams. I have no clue what they mean. Because they're dreams that are in-process dreams. Do you know what I mean by that? That sometimes God doesn't reveal the true interpretation until way down the road. I don't know at what point God began to speak and show Joseph what the interpretation of that dream was. I don't know whether it was the very moment his brothers arrived in his court in Egypt. 22 years later. I don't know if it was a few months or years before that when he was like, I wonder if you've got something up your sleeve, God. But when they arrived and he saw them and they're banged down, you know, the Bible talks of the intensity of his emotions and kind of, oh, whoa, trying to wrap my head around this. And eventually we get to Genesis 45. And it talks about... Uh, you know, he could no longer control his emotions. He could no longer control himself. And he has everyone leave except his brothers. And then he said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were absolutely terrified. They must have thought, like, all our worst fears have come to fruition in this moment. Why wasn't he consumed for vengeance? Why wasn't he consumed with like, I will now make you pay for 50 years? You know, really. You know, I'm, I'm like, God, I want to have as forgiving a heart as Joseph did. And, and then he says to his brothers, come close to me. I'm your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed. And this is one of my favorite passages. I love this. I'm like, this is a man who has had the God perspective. He's seeing with God's heart. He's, he's understanding do not interpretations belong to God. Don't be distressed. Don't be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now, there's been famine in the land, and for the next five years, there will not be plowing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So then, and this blows my mind, so then it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me father to Pharaoh, lord of his entire household, and ruler of all Egypt." 
Wow, that kind of blows my mind. This guy was sold into slavery. He lived in slavery for 13 years. Probably half of that time he was in prison. A slave and in prison. I'm like, that's kind of, <laughs> I'm not sure you can get much worse than that. And, and yet he was able to rise up and be like, don't be angry that you sold me into you know, slavery. You know, he, he's concerned about them in this moment. I'm like, you're crazy, man. Either that or you're filled with the heart of God. And, and I feel God has given many of us dreams and he's given many of us visions. And, and, and sometimes we're a bit like, when's it going to come to pass? When am I, I going to get married? When am I going to have children? When am I going to be financially stable? When am I going to be a missionary? When am I going to... How many of you have, when am I going to questions in your life. Yeah. And it's not just about the when you get there, but it's about what you do along the way. It's about the, what, the choices that don't seem to matter today are going to make a big difference at the end of the day. The, the choices of, yes, I will, or I'm going to forgive, or Whatever those choices are, God is saying they are so important because when, when Joseph met his brothers, if he had not been make, if he'd not been saying yes to God, yes to forgiveness, yes to I love your big plan, God, there is no way he would have been able to respond as he did. No way. That arrogant 17-year-old from 22 years before, he would have made them pay. And so, I feel like I'm speaking on two things tonight. I kind of am, but God gave me two things, so what can I do? Um, dreams are a really incredible part of our relationship with God, and they can be. And, and tonight, I want to pray for two groups of people. I want to pray for the people who are like, I want to understand my dreams more, and I want the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that I can understand God's heart and I can, I can begin to interpret dreams. God, give me that mantle of Joseph and Daniel. And I want to pray for you because I believe God is raising up jo Joseph's and Daniel's in this generation. People who will be in business and government and uh, places of influence who your friend, your boss, your co-worker is going to say to you, hey, I had this dream. And you're going to be able to say, it's not... Me, he's got the wisdom, but I know, I know God, and, and he has the interpretation of your dream. But I also believe there are people who are on that journey, and you've been losing hope. Um, a, a, a bunch of you guys shared words when you were just sharing before I got up, and I was a little like, you've kind of preached the message already. I love it when that happens, when people are like, we're praying in a different room, and God gives them the insight. I'm like, I, I'm in the other room, and I'm writing down the other stuff from God, and it all kind of comes together in a great plan. That's why it's important to hear God's voice. But um, I want to pray for those of you who've been feeling really discouraged because I feel God wants to reignite dreams. He wants to reignite hope in your heart because there are some of you who have just felt a bit like, what's the point? You know, does it matter the small choices I make in life? Um, does it matter if I look at porn? Does it matter if I, you know, lie? Does it matter if I cheat? Does it matter if, you know, I just say, whatever, God, I'm going to live half-heartedly. And I feel there's this kind of intensity in the heart of God for you. And he's saying, I, you know what, the, to be honest, the picture I get, I, I just see this fireball that God is like throwing at your heart. And there's about to be a reignition, reignition? a reignition of passion. So people who would like a mantle of wisdom and understanding and dream interpretation, why don't you jump up? Because I want to pray for all of you because I'm so passionate about this. Hmm. Wow. If you're at home, you can stand up in your heart or whatever that, you know, stand up in front of the laptop or computer. Holy Spirit, I thank you for these incredible people. And Father, I thank you for just the, the wisdom and the, the gifting you've given me. And Father, I ask tonight that you would just give a double portion 
to each and every one here. Father, would you give them dreams, dreams of destiny, dreams of encouragement, dreams of wisdom, dreams of warning, dreams that will change the course of nations. Father, I ask that you would give them a spirit of wisdom and revelation, that they would have understanding to interpret all kinds of visions and dreams. Father, I ask just as you placed a mantle of wisdom, a, man a mantle of understanding upon Daniel and Joseph, so that Daniel was regarded as a, of more excellent understanding than any of the other young men in, in the kingdom. Father, I ask that you would place that sort of mantle on people tonight. Come, Holy Spirit. Father, would you place people specifically and purposefully in spheres of influence? Father, for those who are going to influence political leaders, for those who are going to influence uh, en the entertainment industry, Father, I ask that you would just begin to cause understanding and revelation to well up within them. Hmm. Wow. If any of you have trouble remembering your dreams, why don't you just place your hand on your head? Ah, Father, I ask that you would come and just begin to remove any blockages. Father, any way that people have not valued dreams... Father, have not, not remembered them because they've not been of value. Father, tonight I ask that you would just come and just uh, remove that veil. And I, 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 I bless your minds, I bless your hearts to remember your dreams. Father, would you, you create a, a, an environment of value in their hearts and minds that, that would, that would begin, begin to nurture the dreams that you are giving them, Father? Ha. <sighs> Lord, let creative dreams come, business ideas, problem-solving ideas. You've done crazy things in dreams, God, and we welcome your understanding. Hmm. Thank you, Father. Hmm. Okay, so I, I just want to invite any of those of you who who really felt like that you've lost hope in, in a dream or a section of your life where you, there's been something that you have uh, a vision, a dream, a plan that, that, that's been in your heart and you're just a little like, it seems so impossible. It seems so far away. I feel so discouraged. Um, yeah, I'm just going to invite you to, to come on up here actually just as a step of faith and a step of here I am, God. And we're going to pray because I felt, I felt God was saying tonight he wants to breathe life into aborted dreams where you felt like there's been death to some of the dreams and, and, and things that have been in your heart. I felt tonight he is igniting hope. He is igniting passion. He is igniting just a, a real a kind of a new fire within you. So why don't you just put your hand on your heart because I think it's your heart that's been disappointed. Your heart that, is, that has been in a place of distress. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you, you knew each one would be here tonight. You knew, knew those who were watching at home. You knew, knew Heather would be watching tonight. And you knew how much they needed hope. And so, Holy Spirit, I ask right now that you would come and just ignite a passion, a hope, a fire in these hearts. Father, where they've just been on the journey and felt so disappointed, Father, so hopeless, would you come and minister to that place of hopelessness right now? Would you come and speak your life? Hey. Your life and your hope to their hearts.
Father, you didn't give them dreams for those dreams to wither and die. Father, some people have spoken over those dreams and said, oh, that's stupid, that's silly. Why do you even think about that? And I, I feel tonight the Father just saying, those are not the words I have spoken over your heart. Those are not the words I have spoken over your dreams. Do not grow weary. Do not lose heart, dear ones. <laughs> That's what he's saying. Do not grow weary. Do not lose heart. Because he is for you. And you are well on the way of that journey. Those dreams you have, those longings you have, he placed them inside of you. And he is the one who is going to bring them to pass. I just feel like there are maybe some of you who, who've, who've been really angry with God and, and may need to just take a moment to forgive Him. Say, God, I've been so angry that what I longed for hasn't yet come to pass. And I've held judgment and offense in my heart against you. For some of you, it may be that you're not married yet. And you long to be married. For some of you, it may be that there's been a job that you've been hoping for. And you've been longing for that. There's something that you've really wanted. And you've you felt angry like, God, you could change it. You could, you could change this. Let's just take a moment and, and do business with him. Just like, Father, I, I'm sorry. I've been so angry with you. I've held this against you. Would you forgive me? And for those of you watching at home, you can pray right along with us. You don't have to be here for God to be working in your heart. And if, and if this, is not, this is not a call that is resonating with you, I'd encourage you to just, just kind of sit back and, and soak in the presence of God. And what, what I mean by that is just, just sit there and say, Holy Spirit, I welcome your presence. I welcome you. Come and speak to me. What are the dreams you have for my life? What are the crazy plans and adventures you have for me? Hey. Father, let your life flood in. Let your life flood in. Father, for where, there, where there's been like a, a U-turn on the journey, and I feel some of you have... I just felt like I am now going in the opposite direction. Like, God, how can you even, how can you redeem this? I just feel him saying tonight that he, he is the God of redemption. He is the God of restoration. He is a God who makes all things new. And I, I want to take just a moment now and I want you to invite him into that dream. Say, Father, I invite you into my dream of going to crazy places all over the world. I invite you into my dream of marriage or children. I invite you into my dream of becoming a rock star. I invite you into my dream and I give that to you. Would you come and walk this journey with me? Yeah, I've just been feeling that there are people um, maybe out there online or here tonight that are really frustrated um, maybe you're not being able to get into that deep sleep where you do dream or you're not able to, to just rest and relax and you're like, God, I've been asking and asking and asking for these dreams and I've been begging you, God, and I just can't sleep or I just can't get into that deep place where I can dream. And I just heard the Lord saying yes tonight. Yes, tonight I give you the peace. 
Tonight, I give you that deep sleep where you're able to dream. Tonight, I'm restoring your ability to dream big again. And I don't know, I just keep hearing over and over, there's a, there's a, a specific woman, and I think her name is Darlene, and you're saying, God, God, I'm so tired, I'm so sick of not having a dream. I'm so sick, I'm about to give up. If you don't do something, I am going to give up. I need a dream. And so I just want to pray for you tonight. And if you're here or if you're online, uh, if you're here, just raise your hand and someone will come to you. But if you know, if you're not, God, God is still there and he desires to give you that dream. So Father God, we just ask that you would come tonight and that you would pour in your peace and your deep rest, Father God that your dreams would just begin to arise up, Father God, that your dreams would just begin to flow, Father God, that that cord would be open, then that, that that pipe would be open from the heavenlies, Father God, to right into that, to the depths of that person, Father God, and those people that are so frustrated, Father God, that they're saying, I see people on my right and on my left who dream so much, God, and I just don't dream anything. I just want to encourage you tonight that God is sending you dreams. God is sending you the peace and the rest that you need. Yeah, Papa, just come right now. Just come right now with your peace. With your peace. Yeah, and also there's, a, there's someone else with, with insomnia that you're like, I, I want to sleep, but I haven't been able to sleep, or your sleep patterns are like way up and down and up and down, and, and like you're, you're falling asleep at noon, or you're going to sleep at noon, but you need to be going to sleep at, at like a, a decent time because your job is, is, is during the day, but you're finding yourself falling asleep at your desk, and you're not able to, to stay awake. And if you're here tonight, we want to pray for you. And if you're not, if you're online, we want to pray for you. Father God, we just ask that you would come and you would just begin to switch those cycles around, Father God, because you made day and you made night, Father God, for us so that we would know when to rest. So we just command right now that their bodies would come into alignment with, with your word, Father God, how it says that you made the morning and you made the evening, Father God. And so we just declare right now that those bodies would come into alignment, that insomnia would go in Jesus' name, and that the peace, that the peace of heaven would just come at the right time, Father God, that it would just be this supernatural thing, Papa. Yeah, Holy Spirit, just come and flow. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we're just going to take a few minutes right now. And if you're, if you're being prayed for, and if you're dealing with God, I just, I just want you to stay in that space. And we, what we're going to do is we're going to welcome the Holy Spirit to just to come and do what He wants to do in our hearts. And so our worship team are just going to minister just to God right now. And, and just, just let His life flow into you. Let His hope flow into you. Thank you, Jesus. Cause he's big. 
bigger than disappointment. Disappointment. He's bringing hope and life and peace. He's bringing hope and life and peace. is in this place tonight His peace is here His peace is in this place tonight His peace is here Like a blanket, he covers you with peace. Like a blanket, he covers you with peace. Is your shelter, your safe place, your refuge. He is your shelter, your safe place, your refuge. He's pouring breathing life to your heart he is breathing life to your heart he's breathing life to your heart breathing life to your heart Can you feel the breath of God? Can you feel the breath of God? of God breath of God he breathes over you he breathes over Breath 
So we're about to finish here. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, if you're sat at home, you can phone the online prayer line, which is 1 800 759 0700. Thanks all for joining us and uh, just encourage you all to just stay in a place of just like soaking and resting in His presence and just allow Holy Spirit to keep doing the deep work that He's doing at the moment.